Welcome back to the Mechanics of Solids lecture series. In this series of videos, we're evaluating beam deflections by integration of the beam differential equation. In this next example, we'll apply the fourth order beam differential equation. This one right here. The example is a fixed fixed beam with a uniform load. I really like this example to illustrate the utility of the fourth order equation. This is a second order indeterminate system that we don't know how to analyze with any of the methods we've learned so far in this class. Yet by integrating the fourth order beam equation, we can solve for the shear force, the bending moment, and the deflection all along the beam. I also find it useful to compare the result to a simply supported beam. And by doing so, we'll develop some good intuition about the effects of fixity on both the bending moment and the peak deflection in the beam. So let's proceed. The load equation here is relatively simple. It's a uniform load, so we can write W of X equals W, w naught. The fourth order equation needs four boundary conditions. We have a fixed support at the left end, a fixed support at the right end. At both fixed supports, we know the effect of the fixed support is to restrain both the deflection and the rotation. So those are our boundary conditions. We write them V of 0 equals 0 and dV by dx of 0 equals 0. Those are for the fixed support at the left end. For the one at the right end, we write V of L equals 0 and dV by dx at L is equal to 0. Let's label the boundary conditions 1, 2, 3, and 4 for further use. Now let's integrate. EI d to the fourth v by dx to the fourth equals negative w naught. Integrate once. EI d cubed v by dx cubed equals negative w naught x plus a constant of integration. Integrate again. EI d squared v by dx squared equals negative w naught x squared over 2 plus c1x plus c2. Let's integrate again. EI d cubed, uh, sorry, dv by dx equals negative w naught x cubed over 6 plus c1x squared over 2 plus c2x plus c3. Now we pause here and note that two of our boundary conditions apply to dv by dx, so it's appropriate to apply those and eliminate some of our constants of integration. We'll start with the second boundary condition, boundary condition 2, dv by dx at 0 equals 0, and if we look at the equation, First term drops out, second term, third term all dropped out, and we're left with C3. So we conclude that C3 is equal to 0. And let's cross it out so we remember. Now let's apply the fourth boundary condition. Boundary condition 4, dv by dx at L equals negative W naught L cubed over 6 plus C1 L squared over 2 plus C2L equals 0. So we can't solve for either C1 or C2, but we can write, write a relationship between the two of them. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's solve for C2 in terms of C1. C2 equals, I'm going to negate each term, W0 and then divide by L. So this one is W0 L squared over 6 minus C1 L over 2. Okay, we'll save that for future use. Now let's integrate one more time. EI times V of X equals negative W naught X to the fourth over 24 plus C1 X cubed over 6 plus C2 X squared over 2 plus another constant of integration, which I'll call C4. Next, let's apply boundary condition 1. Boundary condition 1 says v of 0 equals 0. Note that all the terms drop out except for c4. We'll conclude that c4 is equal to 0 and cross it off there. So this is what we're left with. EIV of x equals this equation here. 
we have the last boundary condition to apply and we know the relationship between C1 and C2. So let's go ahead and apply this last boundary condition. We write this V of L equals negative W naught L to the fourth over 24 plus a C1 L cubed over 6 plus, let's go ahead and write L squared over 2 and now substitute in for C2 W naught L squared over 6 minus C1 L over 2. Careful math is required here. Set this equal to 0. Let's see, we have two terms multiplying W naught, two terms multiplying C1. Let's group the like terms. W naught L to the fourth times negative 1 24th plus on this side 2 times 6 1 12th and then we have a plus C1 times L cubed and we have a 1 6th minus a 1 over 2 times 2 1 4th equals 0. So this term right here reduces to a positive 1 24th and this term right here reduces to a negative 1 12th. So we can solve here for C1. C1 equals W naught L to the fourth divided by L to the cube. So W naught L and then uh, then we have a uh, C1, 1 24th divided by 1 12th, so we get a factor of 2 here. So C1 is equal to W naught L over 2. Now we'll substitute in for C2 equals W naught L squared over 6 minus W naught L, W naught L squared divided by 2 times 2 is 4 and this is going to reduce to negative W naught L squared over 12. Okay, so the next step, the last step would be to uh, summarize V of X equals divide through by EI negative W naught X to the fourth over 24 EI plus substitute in the C1, W naught L, so we get W naught L X cubed over 6 times 2 is 12 EI plus C2 X squared over 2 where C2 is negative 1 12th so we get negative W naught L squared X squared over 24 EI. And this is our equation for V of X. Okay, to find the maximum deflection we're going to uh, consider the deflected shape and evaluate it um, where we expect the max to occur. Deflected shape looks something like that due to the fixity at the ends it prevents rotation at the end. We, prevent, we expect the maximum to occur at the middle. So evaluate V at L over 2 equals negative W naught L to the fourth over 24 EI. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Let's start over there. We're evaluating at L over 2. What I'm going to do here is notice that every term is going to have a W L to the fourth over EI. So I'm going to pull that out front. And and then pr proceed. So, L, so I have a negative 1 24th times L over 2 is 1 half to the 4th, which is going to be 1 16th. Then I have plus a 1 12th times L over 2 cubed, or 1, one half cubed, which is 1 8th. And then finally I have a minus um, 1 24th times L over 2 squared or 1 half squared which is 1 fourth. Now notice 
The second term is 1 over 12 times 8, and the third term is negative 1 over 24 times 4. Those are equal, and so they cancel out. And we're left with uh, negative 1 over 24 times 16, 384, w naught l to the fourth over ei. Okay, so to summarize, deflected shape looks something like this, and the peak value in the center is 1 over 384, w naught l to the fourth over ei. Now recall the result for a simply supported beam. Simply supported, where you don't have the fixity at the end, but rather you have the pins at the end, and therefore it allows rotation at the end. And if you recall, the peak deflection in that case was 5 over 384, w naught l to the fourth over ei. So by providing the fixity at the ends of the beam, we reduce the peak deflection by a factor of 5. As I mentioned, it's also useful to look at the shear and moment. Now once I had the deflection equation, uh, which we developed earlier, you can take derivatives of that to get the moment function from the second, second derivative and the shear function from the third derivative. And we're left with this result. The shear, v of x, is negative w naught x plus w l over 2. The moment is this quadratic equation right here. We can find the shear and the moment at the left end by evaluating at 0. v of 0 is w l over 2. m of 0 is this constant here, negative w l squared over 12. Now this is the result for the shear and moment of a simply supported beam, which we've seen many times. Let's go ahead and look at the same thing for a fixed, fixed beam. Fixed fixed beam, the shear at 0 is w l over 2 exactly the same as for a simply supported beam, and it does increase linearly and makes a, a symmetric or anti-symmetric shear diagram. It's exactly the same as that for a simply supported beam. So there's no change in the shear, and that makes sense because we expect that both of the reactions are going to be equal and opposite, so nothing changes there. But what does change is the moment diagram. The moment at the left end drops down w naught l squared over 12. Okay? But then it increases just like for a simply supported beam because the shear diagram being the same. So it's going to have a slope like this and come back down to w naught l squared over 12 at the end. And this peak value right here in the middle is negative w l squared over 12 plus w l squared over 8, which is w l squared over 24. Okay, so moment diagram has the same shape. The main thing is that it's shifted down due to the fixed supports at the end and the non-zero moments at the end. And as a result, the peak moment in the beam reduces from w l squared, w l squared over 8 for a simply supported beam to w l squared over 12 for a fixed fixed beam. And because the moment is reduced, we know the stress will also be reduced. So both the stress and the deflection of a fixed fixed beam are substantially reduced compared to a simply supported beam. And that's one of the benefits of providing fixity.